Trishni. Our top story this week is the democratic protests in Hong Kong. Since June, people have been protesting in the streets of Hong Kong, a region in southern China. This all started because of a new law that would send some citizens to China for trial. Hong Kong and China have a complicated relationship. Hong Kong was once a British colony. But, to ni- but since 1997, it's been a part of China. When Hong Kong was returned to China, there was an agreement called the One Country, Two Systems Deal. This means that Hong Kong has their own set of laws and their citizens enjoy more rights than Chinese who live on the mainland. Many people feel that this new law sending people to China for trial is breaking the One Country, Two Systems deal. There is more to it than that. Hong Kong residents want to make sure their system remains democratic and are afraid of China having more control. More control over all of their laws, not just the new ones. This week, officials passed a new law that protesters cannot wear masks. So demonstrators took to the streets, all wearing masks to fight this new rule. Unfortunately, these protests have seen violence between the police and demonstrators. And with no simple solution, there is no end to the sight of these protests. And now, some more interesting stories for you. For the first time in history, conservationists have collected trash from the Great Pacific Ocean garbage patch for recycling. After one year of testing, the Ocean Cleanup Organization announced that this week, their System 001B vessel is successfully capturing and collecting plastic debris. The self-contained system uses natural forces of the ocean to catch and concentrate plastic in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. We told you about this idea last year on the Friday Show and about the man behind it, Boyan Slat. The patch is a massive island of trash drifting halfway between California and Hawaii. Over a trillion pieces of debris have have collected there because of of the swirling vortex of current, a floating mass roughly twice the size of Texas. After discovering the patch in the 90s, scientists said that it would take up to a, a thousand years to clean it up, but Slack quickly made a name for himself after he presented a TEDx talk in which He claimed that he could do it in less than 10, if he could get a special machinery built. Though his claim called many skeptics to raise their eyebrows, Slat dropped out of college so he could bring his plans to life. In addition to crowdfunding $2.2 million for his idea, he raised millions more dollars through interested investors. Now, System 001B Vessel, which launched from Vancouver in June, is working and collecting garbage from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. In addition to collecting visible pieces of plastic debris, System 001B has also successfully captured microplastics, as small as one millimeter, a feat which the organization was pleasantly surprised to achieve. Despite the early success of System 001B, there's still much work to do. With new learnings and experience from the successful deployment of System 001B, The ocean cleanup will now begin to design its next ocean cleanup system, System 002, a full-scale cleanup system. Scientists have helped three amputees merge with their bionic prosthetic legs so they can use and feel their limb as if it's a part of their own body. The amputees were able to climb over various obstacles without having to look thanks to sensory feedback from the prosthetic leg that's delivered to nerves in the leg stump. Scientists from a European team led by Swiss institutions are responsible for the great work. This is the first artificial limb in the world for above-knee leg amputees equipped with sensory feedback. The feedback is crucial for relieving the mental burden of wearing a prosthetic limb, which in turn leads to improved performance and ease of use. The fundamental neuroengineering principle is about merging body and machine. It involves imitating the electrical signals that the nervous system would have normally received from the person's own real leg. Specifically, the bionic leg prototype is equipped with seven sensors all along the sole of the foot and one encoder at the knee. These sensors generate information about touch and movement from the prosthesis. This approach has already proven to be efficient for studies of the bionic hand. Users could tell when researchers touch the big toe, the heel, or anywhere else on the foot. This new bionic leg technology literally takes neuroengineering a step forward, providing a promising new solution for this highly disabling condition that affects more than 4 million people in Europe and in the United States. On a farm in the southern region of China lives a very big pig that's as heavy as a polar bear. 
The 1,102-pound animal is a part of a herd that's being bred to become as big as possible so their meat can be sold to meet rising demands. Some of the pigs can sell for more than 10,000 won, um, $1,400. That's over three times higher than what the average person makes a month. The pigs may be an extreme example of the lands farmers are going to fill China's swelling pork shortage problem. High pork prices in China are causing farmers to raise pigs to reach a, an average weight of 200 kilograms higher than the normal weight of 125 kilograms. A larger, the larger the pig, the more money the farmer can sell it for, and the more meat it will give. The large swine are being bred during a desperate time for China with African swine fever, decimating the nation's hog herd half in half by some estimates. Pork prices have soared to record levels, leading the government to urge farmers to boost production to stop inflation. Octopus in the wild have been observed changing their skin color and texture to avoid predators or catching unsuspecting prey. Now, for the first time, a researcher has captured a spellbinding video of a cephalopod called Heidi rapidly changing into a rainbow of colors while sleeping. The footage, part of Octopus Making Contact, a documentary that premiered on PBS on October 2, 2019, was captured by David Shield, who has raised Heidi at the home aquarium since she was young. The professor at Alaska Pacific University in Anchorage believes that the octopus, whose skin went from pale gray to ghostly white to a deep dark violet before transitioning into a blotchy greenish-brown camouflage pattern, was dreaming of catching her next meal. She's asleep, she sees a crab, and her color starts to change a little bit. Then she turns all dark. Octopuses will do that when they leave the bottom, he adds. This is a camouflage like she's just gotten a crab, and now she's going to sit there and eat it, and she doesn't want anyone to notice her. If she's dreaming, that's the dream. Shield's theory about Heidi's delectable dream stems from the fact that animals with the ability to camouflage have never been observed changing colors so abruptly while sleeping. The hour-long documentary, which tracks Shield's relationship with the octopus, also showcases Heidi's other talents. She enjoys playing with small toys, watching television, particularly the Big Bang Theory, and solving puzzles. The talented cephalopod can also escape from small spaces, use tools, and even pull on a buzzer, pull on a string to activate a buzzer. Like any smart family pet, Heidi recognizes Sheila and his teenage daughter Laura and excitedly rushes to her tank's side and greeting every time either gets close. Scientists hope to digitally unravel scrolls charred by Vesuvius with light 10 billion times brighter than the sun. Scientists from the University of Kentucky say they're working to perfect a technique to digitally unravel fragile ancient texts that haven't been read in nearly 2,000 years. The University of Kentucky's Digital Restoration Initiative research team just returned from a trip to England where they took detailed images of the scrolls from the ancient Roman city of Herculaneum using a facility called a synchrotron. In a synchrotron, the diamond light source accelerates electrons to nearly the speed of light so that they emit light 10 billion times brighter than the sun. The synchrotron tunes energy to be very focused like a laser. The waves go right through very quickly. This technology is necessary to help do the immensely detailed work of trying to read scrolls preserved when Mount Vesuvius rained fire and ash on the Roman towns of Pompeii and Herculaneum in 79 AD. The scrolls remain buried in a villa in Herculaneum believed to be associated with Julius Caesar's family until they were rediscovered in 1752. After being charred in the eruption, unpacking the scroll's secrets have proven, has proven near impossible. Attempting to physically unroll the scrolls might ruin them, so the task ahead of the University of Kentucky researchers is to use the sophisticated imaging technique to see through the delicate layers of papyrus rolled over on itself hundreds of times. Fashion designers have replaced plant-based vegan leather with fabric made out of apple peels. Rather than making purses out of plastic, a small Canadian company has begun making fake leather clothing items out of apple peels that are recycled from the juicing industry. The two sisters behind the Toronto-based fashion line, Samara, recently launched their mini purse, which is the first object made out of their new apple leather. The designers say that they were inspired to develop to develop the material as a means of replacing the petroleum-based materials that are typically used to make fake leather. Though the designers told reporters that they are currently using 
polyurethane as a binding agent, they reassured that the glue is still much more eco-friendly material compared to the polyvinyl chloride, PVC, that is commonly used in the textile industry. As the vegan leather industry is growing, we decided that it was time to raise the bar and start experimenting with other plant-based materials, reads the Samara website. We've been hard at work over the last year aiming to create our best seller, the Mini, out of apple-based leather. After many iterations and quality checks, it's finally here. Made from apple skins that are byproducts of the juicing industry, we've designed our newest addition to the Mini collection, our Apple Leather Mini. The Mini is now on sale at the Samara website for $50 a pop. Additionally, a portion of every purchase made through the company's website helps send a solar-powered backpack to a child in East Africa. Hi, I'm Rishi with your weather report. Today will be mostly sunny with a high of 70 degrees, a low of 52 degrees, and a 0% chance of rain. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy with a high of 73 degrees, a low of 53 degrees, and a 10% chance of rain. Sunday will be mostly sunny with a high of 67 degrees, a low of 46 degrees, and a 10% chance of rain. That's it for weather. Hi, I'm Trishneet with this week's brain teasers. The last primary brain teaser was, before Mount Everest was discovered, what was the world's highest mountain? And the answer is Mount Everest. And the winner is room 209. The last intermediate brain teaser was, what goes up but, and what, what goes up and da, down but never moves? The answer is stairs. And the winner is room 502, room 406, and room 402. This week's primary brain, te brain teaser is, who am I? I repeat, who am I? This week's intermediate brain teaser is, you use a knife to slice my head and weep beside me when I'm dead. Who am I? I repeat, you use a knife to slice my head and weep beside me when I'm dead. Who am I? That's it for brain teasers. Hey everyone, I'm Maria with this week's sports report. Baseball season is over in the Bay Area, but the playoffs are underway. The Yankees advance beating the Twins in three games while the other five series are tied two games each. In MLS news, the San Jose Earthquakes lost to the Portland Timbers 3-1. Their season is officially over. In football, the Oakland Raiders played the Chicago Bears in London last week and won 24-21. They are second in the AFC West Conference. The 49ers played the Cleveland Browns on Monday and beat them 31-3. The 49ers are an impressive 4-0 to start the season. In hockey news, the Sharks haven't started so well and are 0-4 after losing to Nashville on Tuesday. In basketball news, the Warriors lost a preseason game against the Lakers, who they play three more times before the regular season tips off October 24th. And finally, in the WNBA Finals, the Connecticut Suns are tied to the Washington Mystics, are tied 2-2, and played a winner-take-all game last night. Unfortunately, they played after the filming of this report. That's all for sports. Great stuff. Thanks, reporters. Tomorrow is the Harvest Festival at Ardenwood Farm. Go check out the corn maze and grab yourself a pumpkin. Don't forget that there is a UN Day Parade and Assembly on October 25th at 9 a.m. Plan to dress in clothes that represent your heritage. Mark your calendar. The Bay Science Festival is Saturday, October 26th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Cal State East Bay. There will be over 50 family-friendly experiments, exhibits, and activities. This is also this Saturday at 5 p.m. There is an animal senses presentation at Coyote Hills. There will be activities and experiments for all ages. Check it out. That's all we've got. See you on the next Friday show.